What's up? To explain the pathogenesis of acute intermittent porphyria, we have to recall him by a synthesis. Recall that all blood cells in our body come from the stem cell. For example, to produce matured blood cell, stem cell undergo differentiation into common myeloid progenitor cell, then progenitor cell become erythroblast, and erythroblast mature initially into reticulocyte, and then into erythrocyte, we call such cell a red blood cell. And the process of heme synthesis occurs on a stage of erythroblast. So when we are talking about heme synthesis, we mean erythroblast. Here we have mitochondria and the cytosol of erythroblast. The process of heme synthesis begins in the mitochondria of erythroblast, where glycine reacts with succinyl CoA with formation of delta amino levulenic acid, so called ALA. The most important feature is that this reaction is catalyzed by the specific enzyme called ALA synthase. And ALA synthase uses as cofactor vitamin B6, so called pyridoxal phosphate. ALA then moves to the cytoplasm where it undergoes conversion by ALA dehydrase into porphobilinogen. Then porphobilinogen by porphobilinogen deaminase is converted into hydroxymethyl B lane. Hydroxymethyl B lane is converted into uroporphyrinogen, and uroporphyrinogen by uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase undergo conversion into coproporphyrinogen. This molecule enters into the mitochondria, where it undergo conversion into protoporphyrin, and then the specific enzyme called ferrocalatase that uses copper as cofactor binds iron to protoporphyrin and this results in formation of heme. Then we bind heme to globin and by this we produce hemoglobin. And then fully matured blood cells with hemoglobin will enter into the circulation. But some genetic mutations can disrupt this pathway, and one of such genetic mutations cause deficiency of porphobilinogen deaminase. As a result, a condition known as acute intermittent porphyria develops. The problem here is that if there will be no porphobilinogen deaminase, then we cannot produce hydroxymethyl B lane. But also, this causes accumulation of porphobilinogen and ALA. Initially, they will be progressively accumulating inside the erythroblast. But then, with destruction of erythroblast, they will be released into the plasma. So, plasma level of both porphobilinogen and ALA will be elevated. The problem is that porphobilinogen and ALA begin to accumulate in various tissues throughout the body, but mostly in neural tissue. And deposition of porphyrins affect neural tissue in multiple ways. First of all, it causes demyelinization of neural fibers. Also, it causes axonal death and death of neurons in sympathetic ganglions. So, polyneuropathy develops. Initially, it caused damage to sensory neurons in peripheral nervous system, and this greatly increased pain synthetization, and as a result, it caused symptoms as abdominal pain and muscle pain. And both of them, in long-term perspective, cause chronic fatigue. And this time, it also caused damage to central nervous system, and this caused multiple psychological disturbances. Both ALA and porphobilinogen are excreted from the organism through the urine. So with high plasma level, the concentration of both ALA and porphobilinogen in the urine will be elevated. And this gives urine a port wine color. We have to know that mutation in porphobilinogen deaminase is autosomal dominant. And this porphyria is precipitated by factors that stimulate ALA synthase. So the concept here is that alcohol and starvation both stimulate ALA synthase. As a result, ALA synthase produces more ALA, and then from ALA, more porphobilinogen is formed. But porphobilinogen deaminase in porphyria is absent, so porphobilinogen and ALA begin to accumulate even more rapidly. The more they accumulate, the more severe will be polyneuropathy, and thereby the more severe will be the clinical symptoms. The first drug that we can use for treatment called hemin. Hemin inhibits ALA synthase. With inhibition of ALA synthase, the production of ALA decreases. With decreasing ALA, the production of porphobilinogen decreases. 
so the concentration of both ALA and porphobilinogen in the blood will decrease. As a result, polyneuropathy will decrease, and thereby the severity of the clinical symptoms will decrease. Also, we can use glucose, because glucose, in opposite to starvin, inhibits the function of ALA synthase. As a result, the production of ALA and porphobilinogen will decrease. With decrease in their blood concentration, polyneuropathy will be less severe, and thereby less severe will be the clinical symptoms. Great. Fine. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 